Richard Feynman once said that all life is fermentation, which means all the things that keep us alive and give us energy are due to some very unique chemistry. Over the past couple hundred years, we've learned a lot about how that chemistry works, but we're still billions of years behind Earth's original fermenters, bacteria and yeast. But luckily, we've put their evolutionary experience to work, making this magical liquid. If only they could tell us how they do it. Now, most of you know pretty much how beer is made, but let's run over the basics so we're all on the same page. Generally speaking, beer is any alcoholic beverage made from fermented cereal grains, usually preserved and flavored with hops. Grains like barley or wheat are malted and then soaked in hot water to release their sugars, creating a liquid called wort. Flavorings are added, the wort is cooled, and then yeast begin the conversion of sugar to ethanol and CO2. After most or all of the sugars consumed, fresh yeast and sugar are added to carbonate the final product in a sealed container. By altering the type of grains used, how they're processed, which hop varieties are added and when, or by including any of a host of flavor additives from chocolate to chili peppers, beer can grow up to be just about anything. Luckily, I'm here at Jester King Brewery in Austin, Texas today with Avery Swanson. You think you can show us how it's done? I think I probably could give you some insight into all that. Let's take a little brewing science tour. So what's different about the kind of beer you make here uh, compared to sort of the typical mass-produced beers that people might be used to? The basic idea is that we are a farmhouse brewery. We're trying to create a product that has a sense of place, a reflection of this time and space and the people making it. We like to think that if you were to take the exact same ingredients and the exact same recipe and try to replicate our product somewhere else, it would taste completely different. What are you trying to make in your final product? How much do you guide the process and how much do you sort of leave up to nature? In our final product, we're looking for as many different interesting flavor and aroma profiles as possible. We don't use lab cultivated single strains of yeast. We really feel like the use of a mixed culture that has many different organisms in it that are all doing totally different things really provides a more interesting aroma and flavor profile to our beer. A melting pot of, of kind of different organisms. Really? Where do those different organisms come from? So I know it's like sometimes you put things like fruit into your beers. So there's yeast and bacteria everywhere around us. It's on your clothes and your skin, it's in the air. It's on the fruit, the produce that you buy at the grocery store. So we can actually take that fruit, put it into live beer, or beer that has living microorganisms in it, and those organisms will work together to undergo another fermentation. Each barrel is a completely different microcosm in its own completely unique microbial population. So what kind of little bugs are in this barrel that are, that are working on the beer right now? So mostly Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is your typical brewer's yeast, um, but we do also use Britannomyces, uh, which is a wild yeast. There's also souring bacteria present in these barrels, Lactobacillus pediococcus, you know, multiple species of each of these different organisms. This sort of feels like you're doing tiny evolution experiments. What do you think is happening in here in terms of those genetics? They reproduce so quickly, and so the mutation rate is very, very high, and they have to be taking up some of the same genetic material that's present in the other organisms that are living within the barrel. It offers us an opportunity to work with new organisms that are going to be able to produce new compounds, new aromas, new flavors in the you final product. You never know what they're going to bring to the no, that's the exciting part. Avery, why do we like beer? Many anthropologists would argue that beer actually came before bread. So we've, in fact, been possibly evolving with this beverage for about as long as we've been around humans. It satisfies so many different things that humans are looking for, right? It's nutritive. There are proteins and vitamins and all kinds of things in this that actually fuel our existence. It is mind-altering. People have been seeking out mind-altering substances for a really long period of time. It's also social, because Absolutely. you and I are sitting here hanging out. Right, it's definitely a very social act that we're engaging in. We're here enjoying this beverage together. You might say beer is the perfect human beverage. Arguably, yes. You heard it here first. <laughs> science. <laughs> do you think what you do is more of a science or an art? I think that Brewing, the beer making process, is the ultimate intersection of those two things. Uh, there's absolutely a science to it. We can talk about these beers from a quantitative standpoint all day long. We can talk about the pH, how we measure that, measure the sugar content. 
but it's absolutely an art too. Each beer that we make is going to be different because each one is made at a different time, under different variables, by different people. Because we're working with living organisms, our beer is very much living when we put it into the vessel. It will continue to evolve in the vessel. It's a living work of art. Absolutely. And really the point is to enjoy it, right? Absolutely. Cheers. Stay curious, everybody, and if you're above the legal drinking age in your nation or state, put a little fermentation in your life. Can I just hang out for a while and finish all these? Definitely.